the community prayer. Lord, we've come to you this day, bringing all that we have, our lives, our hopes and dreams, our fears and sorrows. We place these before you in faith and hope, knowing that no matter what has happened, you are with us and blessing us. Open our hearts to receive your words and your spirit, that we may find healing and comfort. Open our lives to the wondrous possibilities for service and joy that you offer to us. Ease our minds and spirits that we may hear the words of encouragement and peace this day. Amen. Now, what will you take for this place? Will it be the message or the music or the inspirational words? And will you and can you leave a symbolic part of yourself? You, this offering this morning, however you give it by mail, by internet, whatever way you um, offer things back to God um, in, in your service will be accepted with love and reverence. With the blessings of this in all our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. 
And now we have another song. a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free, in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. a song in every silence seeking word and melody there's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me from the past will come the future what it holds a mystery unrevealed until its season Something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning. In our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. In our life, eternity. In our death, our at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something God alone can see This morning's reading is taken from Ruth, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. But meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there, just as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took Ten of the elders of the town and said, sit here, and they did so. Then he said to the guardian redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me. So I will know, for no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. And Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the Moabite, the dead man's widow, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Of this, the guardian redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now, in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the guardian redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today we are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimech, Kilion, and Marlon. And I've also acquired Ruth, the Moabite, Marlon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from his hometown. Today, you are witnesses. 
Then the elders and all the people at the gate said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in Re Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem through the offspring that the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of uh, Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Mo uh, Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. These are the words of God. So when Stephen and I were uh, living um, with Molly during the time after the uh, Hurricane Sandy, um, the one uh, thing I came to recognize is Molly watched um, the Hallmark Channel constantly. And I just could not understand how she could watch it. It was, you know, kind of too mushy for me. But over COVID, I came to understand why she watched the Hallmark Channel. The Hallmark Channel was, uh, could be calming. You knew kind of what the storyline and that theme of love that uh, somehow love would win through all was very hopeful. Well, the Book of Ruth, it's a love story too. Now, while it has all the twists and the turns and the drama of the Hallmark Channel, or maybe if uh, you're more contemporary, the 90 Day Fiance, uh, this is a different kind of love story. And so we're gonna explore that love story together today. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, I just uh, offer up myself and I offer up my words to you so that they may speak to your children. Amen. So as we think back about last week, and our story begins with the most desperate of circumstances. So due to famine, Elimelech left his hometown in Bethlehem. He moves his family to enemy territory, Moab. And um, Elimelech and his two sons end up dying and leaving his wife and his son's wives widows. And the prospects are bleak. And so Naomi decides to return with her daughter-in-law, Ruth, who refuses to leave her side. And so this is a story that highlights the relationship of love between Naomi and Ruth. Ruth and Naomi travel to Bethlehem and they are desperate and they are poor. And in order to find food, Ruth finds a landowner, Boaz, who will allow her to harvest on uh, his land, the barley. And Boaz immediately steps up and does all he can to provide food and protection for both Ruth and Naomi. This is a story of God's love that God provides even when we can't see it. Naomi's husband and son had rights to a piece of land. And so according to the law, the nearest male relative gets to marry uh, his widow and provide her with an heir. And this would protect and preserve the inheritance of the deceased husbands of Naomi and Ruth. And Boaz was a relative to the late husband of uh, Naomi. And so he would qualify to be what they call a kinsman redeemer. And so Ruth approaches Boaz one night and asks him, will he do just that? And Boaz is more than willing to do so. This is a story of love between Boaz and Ruth. 
Now it ends up that, of course, this is the twist. Once again, there's a problem with Boaz marrying Ruth. There is another man who is a closer relative than Boaz. And so he needs to ask him if he wants to marry Ruth first. But Boaz clears this final legal hurdle that was standing in the way of him marrying Ruth and Na redeeming Naomi's family. And he claims the land in the name of Elimelech and the, his two sons. And he and Ma Naomi are married and they bear this child together. And the fact that Boaz and Ruth were able to raise up a son to, in the name of the deceased Elimelech was evidence of God's blessing. This is a story of how out of brokenness, the love of God restores Naomi. Finally, in a loving act of restoration to Naomi that goes way beyond any of their expectation, Ruth becomes the great, great grandmother of the King David. And ultimately out of the line of King David comes Jesus. This is a story of how God's love was set into motion to redeem all people. You know, it's a, it's a short story. It has a lot of action packed in it. But I think this story really can teach us a lot of things. And I think it can teach us some important lessons about love. Love requires sacrifice. Love is reflected in a life that, that is lived with integrity. And finally, love bears influence for generations to come. So first, love requires sacrifice. You know, this is a beautiful story of love in so many ways, but it is also one of sacrifice. Ruth sacrificed her interest to those of Naomi. Boaz sacrificed his interest to those of Ruth. And out of their actions comes a great blessing. You know, last week we talked about how Ruth sacrificed her own future when she decided to go to Bethlehem with Naomi rather than returning to her family. And it is in that sacrifice when Ruth refuses to leave her family that we see her commitment. Her commitment to journey with Naomi is a beautiful selfless act. And it is a stunning example of the love that uh, she had. Boaz also sacrificed greatly for Ruth and Naomi by taking on the role of kinsman redeemer. You see the other man, he just wanted to be the redeemer so that he could get the property. But then when he saw all the obligations that went with the property, he said, forget it, that would ruin my family. Being the one to redeem the land had implications for the future. This meant that the first child that they would have that Ruth would carry would not carry on Boaz's family name or be in his family line, but instead it would be in the line of Elimelech. Also their future children together would not benefit from his buying this land. Though it was a significant commitment and a significant sacrifice, Boaz takes this on. So when I think about this, I need to ask myself, do I love in a sacrificial way? Am I willing to do the hard things, the costly things, the things that look like they're going to ruin all of my plans in order to honor and serve God? Second, love is reflected in a life lived with integrity. Well, most of us likely want to try to do the right thing. When we're faced with really hard choices, what happens? Are we people of character 
when no one is looking? You know, Ruth had no idea how her story would unfold or be told for thousands of years. And yet she acted with integrity for the moment. Actually, it was her character, it was her integrity that drew Boaz to her. It says, I've heard how you helped your mother-in-law since your husband died. You even left your own father and mother to come and live in a foreign land among people you don't know. Ruth went above and beyond in a way that she honored and respected her mother-in-law. And in doing so, she became noticed by her whole city of being a virtuous woman. She worked hard to provide food for her. And she, everything she did showed her character. And because of that character, she was honored by God. Boaz too was a man of integrity. When Ruth first came into the fields to glean some of the food, he tells her to stay close to the other women and not to go to another field. And he also tells the men not to touch her. And this interaction shows his character. So how am, I ask myself, how am I living with integrity? Am I showing respect to everyone, putting the needs of others beyond my own, offering to help others in need, taking responsibility for my actions? and being honest and humble, even in times when it's inconvenient. I know for me, I don't know, maybe for you, sometimes my pride gets in the way and I act selfishly and I come up short and I fall out of integrity with myself and those I love. Taking responsibility for my choices with integrity is an act of love. Finally, love bears influence for generations to come. Decisions made today can impact generations. Ruth and Boaz experience God's blessing as they make character-filled, faith-filled choices. Their choices put them in a position to receive a blessing. Ruth decided to go with Naomi. She chose to glean in the fields. Boaz decided to reach out and help. And his interceding brought about a child, which is in the direct lineage of Jesus. Ruth and Boaz make decisions many, many years ago. And because of their decisions, it change the lives of countless generations. You know, we don't control our lives, but we can choose how we live our lives. So I ask you to consider your daily decisions and what effect they might have on your children or grandchildren, the children of those around you and beyond. You know, the decisions we make today can either directly or indirectly affect the interest of future generations, both those generations already born, but also those to be born decades and even centuries after we're gone. Even though we might not expect that our decisions could affect the course of history, I don't think Ruth or Boaz would have imagined that their actions could lead to saving the world. So how will we spend our time and our money? How do we care for our planet? How do, will our decisions as a church impact the next generation? You know, how do, do they impact Mia and Abby Nicole, on Ga how are they going to affect Gavin and Ruby and Sam and Abby? Love calls us to prayerfully choose our direction 
And God may use our small decisions today to affect generations to come. Affirmation, enduring legacy, loose ends all tied up and even a bouncing baby boy. That's how the book of Ruth concludes. But the story of love continues. Through the story of Ruth, we can see the power that one life can have on all of the world. And we can see that God uses faithfulness of ordinary people to do great things. So what's your story this morning? How are you calling to live your life in reflection of what you have learned from this book? Is there a place where God is calling you and asking you to sacrifice for love? Sacrifice your own comfort or personal choices for the good of another? Are your actions when no one is watching a reflection of your love and your faith? And finally, how will you, as an act of love, invest in the next generation? Abundant harvests, overflowing blessings, new life where before there was only emptiness. All of this is made possible through the love of God. God's extraordinary love and faithfulness shines forth from this story. And Ruth's story becomes our story through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, our Redeemer. So how will we respond to this gift of love as a church? What sacrifice are we being called to make to show Jesus is love to others? When no one is paying attention, how will we as a church lead and live? And finally, where as simply grace are we making the next generation a priority for today? Will you pray with me, please? Amazing God, we thank you for the love, the sacrifice, the integrity, the care that we found in this book of Ruth. We ask you, Lord, to just open our eyes and open our hearts, open our minds, to the ways that you choose us to carry out your message for today, for tomorrow, and for all time to come. Amen. <clears throat> and I invite you to unmute yourself as we pray this together. I have you. I have, I have you. you. You have me. We have each other, and I don't know if I lost everyone. <laughs> we'll reach out to others, and God has us all. <laughs>